Hi everyone. Hello. This is Standing in the Gap Ministry. Our names are Kevin and Kathy Smith. Yes, it is. And Standing in the Gap Ministry. You know, he forgot my name the other time. <laughs> For the reconciliation <laughs> of people to Jesus Christ, first mm. and foremost, and to each other. And again, on uh, this program, we have Matt and um, Faith, Faith Seymour. Seymour. Thank Yay! you. Yay! Again, we're so glad to have you on. And we're going to continue, we're going to continue this story on, on this show. And did you have anything Where? to share at the no, outset? No, I, I, the only thing I want to share is that the joy of the Lord is evident mm. yeah. in your lives. And it's just a blessing to be around couples and a couple mm -hmm. who love the Lord. Mm. This is no game, people. We walk in the joy of the Lord. Mm. It doesn't mean we don't have issues, problems, this, yeah. that, whatever. Right. We have children. We have issues. <laughs> Joy is in the absence of those things. It's in the midst of those it's things. It's in the Amen. midst of Amen. all of it, Absolutely. that no matter what it is, and we can have that um, fellowship, that, that time to just enjoy each other's company, mm -hmm. mm. you know? And I, I love that. And, and this is a couple that we've been able to do that with multiple times, and... Um, that's why we're just so blessed to have him here. Yeah. Mm. To we're bless excited. you people. Yeah, this is awesome. And yeah. And tell about the great things God has done. Exactly. Right. We want to be hope dealers. We yeah. want to look, there's a there's a different way. There's a better way. There is. Mm -hmm. And and that way is real. Absolutely. This mm -hmm. isn't a fairy tale. No. Yeah. It felt like it. Yeah. In the beginning it does. Yeah. It really does. And you get to walk in that joy and that that freedom mm. basically is what it is, freedom in Christ. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And love one another as Christ has loved the church. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And watch well, each other grow. Yeah. And even to, to go on top of the fairy tale thing, I mean, it's like the whole mountain valley, right? The fairy tales, those times where you're like, oh, man, I can't even believe my life is this. This is awesome and amazing. Yes. Mm. And there's times you're like, man, this is really dark and this is really <laughs> crazy heavy. and I stuff is <laughs> really going on. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. still walking through those together, mm -hmm. right? And, and But yet, you know, Jesus yeah. Christ is right there. Yeah. The Holy, oh, absolutely. Holy Spirit is That's so... Got his hand on you. Well, he's holding when, you tight. When, you, when you're talking about the joy, right? Joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Fruit yes. doesn't come by forcing anything. Right, you you maintain that being plugged into the Lord, into His Word, and believing in Him, having that relationship, and those are the things that will naturally come out. So you have the joy of the Lord because you're like, oh man, God's on the throne. No matter yeah. what's going on today, that's and that's what comes out. That's yeah. why you hear you know, the Bible talks about peace that passes understanding, oh, and we get, sometimes better. it just has that phraseology, but it's mm -hmm. no, it's. You're, how can that even be a peace where you're at right now? Mm -hmm. And it's not the lack of conflict or troubles. It's in the midst of it, right? Yes. Yes. But those are the things that come out of it because of walking with him. Amen. Yeah. Love Our it. last show, which I want you all to go back and watch, um, uh, uh, it was fantastic. But we ended <laughs> with some exciting stuff. You're married, you're living life, God's doing great things, mm. you're following the Lord, and babies come. <laughs> well, we even had a little caveat before that. Well, I think we were married for um, how long? Two months, mm -hmm. and I got pregnant with Ruby. Mm -hmm. and Our during... Ruby! Mm -hmm. She's 22 Why now. did you name her Ruby? That's my grandmother's name. Oh, and I my, love it. My grandma Ruby, your mom and I used to, Oh, I'm going to cry. Darn it. <laughs> your mom and I used to talk about Ruby and, and my mom and my yes. mom's sister. They both struggled with addiction for most of my life growing up. Both have been yeah. saved and walking with the Lord and yes. addiction. I won't say addiction free. 
conquering daily. Yes. Contending daily with their addictions. Yes. And my grandma Ruby was the only praying member of our family for all of those years. And I didn't get saved until about two years after she passed. So I always, I, I remember telling Olivia, you got to tell my grandma, I said, I got saved and I'm good. If yeah. I don't know how all that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure she knows your mother with those crystal eyes. Yes. Oh, I know she knows. And I'm yes. like, oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, so then come uh, November, so I got pregnant early May, I think, and then in November we took custody of my mom's sister, my aunt Suzanne's oldest son first. Right, who was just about to turn five. He, yeah, it was just a few months before his fifth birthday. And then, were you asked to do that? So that's a story I won't go into because that's a part of Suzanne's testimony. Right, right. But uh, no, I found her boys in a bad place. Okay. And mm -hmm. we had to physically remove them. In fact, I took both boys home. Or I intended to take both boys home. And one had been in and out of foster care at that point, And mm. he was taken by the foster parents because we were brand new married. And I right. was pregnant. And it was not going to be a pretty situation. When the younger one was like two. and two. a half. Yeah, yeah two. Oh. He was yeah, two, two at that time. He had just turned two because yeah. he turned two in October. <gasps> it's his birthday this week. Anyway, uh, so we continued, and then in when Ruby was born, we had full custody of Ma um, Mitchell, mm -hmm. and we had been talking back and forth with the foster parents, and they were going to put in for full adoption of Mikey, oh. the little one. And a part of us was like, well, they are from a cult um, religion that I was like, Matt, we can't let this happen. We literally cannot let this cult raise our, mm -hmm. my, what is kind of like a nephew. He's a cousin. Well, and, and they the were good is, people, but they were, yeah. they were going to do some false things. So, yeah. well, and in light of what your show is about, our hope was, okay, this would be an eye opener for her aunt yeah. yes. and, and their dad. And if he goes and gets adopted, that's gone. The, they'll the, never, they'll never have both of their kids. It would not have been an open adoption. They were putting in right. for something. And so we always they would laugh been. because the first year we were married, we had three kids. Yeah. <laughs> By our first anniversary, wow. our first we anniversary. were married with three children. A five-year-old, a two-and-a-half-year-old, and, and, an, and a, a brand-new-born brand brand Ruby. <laughs> she was. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how'd that happen? We yeah, triplets, different ages. Yeah. Yeah. It was a first. Yeah. But the blessing is, is that a brand new married couple in Christ had who was willing mm. to take care mm. and love on other people's children. We didn't know any other way. That's true. There was just no other way to do that life. That we had a car, a two door car that had four seats and a motorcycle. <laughs> That was it. We rented a tiny little $625 a month two-bedroom. It was like a little fourplex in Uptown Whittier. I always look back but and I'm like, God. what in yes. the world but were God. you doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. There was he no knew way. all this. He was not surprised at all by any of it. No. no. But we had a family who loved us and supported us. And Suzanne did turn her life away, around. And Bill did turn his life around. And Thank within you, two Jesus. and a half years, they got married, got sober, and took the boys back. She continued to have some problems off and on, mm -hmm. um, but the boys did have some stability, and then, of yes. course, we were always in their life. Right. If yeah. Mikey had been yeah. taken, or even Mitchell had yeah. been taken, that would have never that been it. That door would have been sealed because it wasn't but the first offense. God, mm -hmm. and I how wanna... you see the Holy yeah. Spirit just moving the cards around. That's right. Say, so, no, right. no, 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 you're coming this way. And break chains for our family. Yes. Chains that bind for generations. Reconciliation. 100%. And, and restoration. And that and same Anne and I are extremely close now. I mean, she is, 
She's been sober almost seven years. We get to celebrate mm-hmm. seven years. And I always told her, wow. tell me when you've been sober for five. Five is my magic number yeah. for, for all things, you know, oh, singleness and right, sobriety right, right. and all this. And so it, now she's well past the five-year mark. I really feel like she'll never go back. And, and she's, she's an aunt who's three and a half, almost four years older than I am. Uh-huh. So we were really sisters that had different parents, different moms. Right, right. Uh, but, yeah, so that was our beginnings. <laughs> well, and I want to jump even, not forward, but in the moment, because the thing yes. that's awesome about this when you're talking about that is one of the things that happened this year is the older one, Mitchell, who was with us, and we've kept in close contact, always family come mm, over and stuff. Yes. He got married this year, and he's doing the same thing with a sister's child. They're adopting similar situation. And so it's one of those. You, I, I don't want to say pay it forward, oh. but you're watching... Oh. Generation and generation of the positives. That's his forward. father's uh-huh. previous marriage's daughter. So uh-huh. like a half sister to him. Yeah. Very much like our situation. But when he called me and said, hey, this baby was born mm. and this, these are the heroin, the things that are in the baby's system. He was yeah. in the hospital for several weeks trying to get off of drugs. But yeah, we we're like, okay, Gordon. There you go. That's fruit, and right? He, he talks about the sowing the seed. It's you're planting the seeds, dad, and what's and his wife is an incredible mom. Yep. Because and, they yeah. had incredible examples. Yes, they had right. incredible, awesome examples. Keep Jesus in the center. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Otherwise, you drown. Right. right. <laughs> That's absolutely true. You know. That's absolutely no true. No truer words spoken. Like you said earlier before we went on the air, it's basically keeping the main thing. The, the main, main thing. thing. That's yeah. right. It's it not, is. It's not uh, brain surgery. Yeah. It right. Really isn't. That's right. No, he keeps it simple for us. Simple. We make it hard. And it's it, mm. no one would be saved. No one would get it. The okay. disciples yeah. didn't get it. He had to make mm. it simple. They were yes. just ordinary. Yes. People from every kind of occupation, and they didn't get it. Why don't you speak plainly to us, Jesus? He's trying to talk to me. <laughs> Perilous, just tell us what you mean. Quit making it complicated. Right? Be straight. <laughs> but God speaks. Mm-hmm. I just have to listen Amen. is the title of this oh. program. And it's God speaks to Christians, non-Christians. He speaks to all of us It's just all the time. It's just we're not tuned in and we're not listening. Right. But we have to be of the same our spirit has to bear witness with his spirit. That's yes. why you have to be born again to be a Christian, yes. to, to hear God speaking clearly in, in your life. That's right. Um, he can still get your attention if you're a non-Christian in a whole bunch of different ways. And you may not understand what's <laughs> happening in your life, but God's doing this in your life. You're just not listening. You just think yeah. it's, what's why are all these bad things happening? Well, bad things happen to, to Christians, non-Christians, good people. Not so good people, but, mm. you know, until we really listen yeah. with spiritual ears, not what, you know, not what's going around us uh, in our, even in our five senses. It's like we'll, we'll hear God when we take the time to listen. God, speak to me and he will speak to you. Speak and he'll speak to you in a way that you, only you can understand. Because yeah. each and every one yeah. of us is different you where you're at. and have been yeah. fearfully and wonderfully made individually, yes. like fingerprints. Our personalities are all, we're all made in God's image. Yes. And he will and can speak to us, but are you listening? And it's funny that you say that because I remember uh, a, just my standard prayer, like going to church, changed about two or three years ago because of exactly that. It used to be, I'd be going like, okay, you know, Lord, have your way today and your spirit be there. And... Um, you know, please speak. And it was all like, wait, you know, and I was reading and it's all like you talking about God speaking. And I'm like, oh, that's right. He's always always. speaking, (laughs) always wants to, always is. It's just whether or not we're taking the time to listen. And then even more important, like you're saying, learn to listen better, right? People are terrible listeners, right? That's one thing we've been learning this year, active listening. Because I think, what is she about to say? And I'm waiting for my idea to finish. And I'm going to figure what you're saying. And then my sentence is ready because I haven't really listened to you, but I know what I want to say. Now I say it. Yeah. And it's like, wait, did you actually really stop to hear the whole thing of what the person's saying Uh and, and listen to what they're saying and form your thoughts then? 
Well, no, it's the uh, same thing with the Lord. It's like, are you listening or are you only listening because you want the answer? That was my issue way early on, right? Yeah. I want you to say this thing. I'm just listening for you to say that. I'm not saying anything else. He's and like, you're not I got listening all kinds or hearing to say. anything else. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so my prayer about three years ago changed. Lord, yeah. help me to hear what you're saying. That's mm-hmm. a good prayer. Yeah. And the, the um, Bible says reliable communication permits progress. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And... Reliable communication is one of the things I don't think any of us <laughs> ever learned to do. No. Mm-hmm. Which leads to the next question. What a segue. Uh, communication yeah. is a part of any relationship, yes. whether you're a Christian, <laughs> non-Christian. But in a marriage, do you consider yourselves good communicators? <laughs> do you consider yourself She's already good, laughing. good communicators? And if not... <laughs> What yeah. would you tell our listening audience? How can you be Email, better communicators? Text. How can you be better listeners? Whether you're married or not, whether you're a Christian or not, what is it for you guys? How are you, how can? Well, he just what said is it, it now, or what did was it, uh, and how did it develop? Because... Twenty three years of that changing throughout the whole yeah. thing, but yeah. yeah. Um, well, I will say this because we have come back to this a few times. So one of the things that's been a very huge benefit in our marriage um, was an agreement we came to very early on. And I'm positive it was from the Lord because I'm not smart enough to come up with this. But what it was <laughs> is this, is, look, we know we're for each other, Always right? And it was one of these things. It wasn't like we were in the middle of an argument. We're sitting, you know, hey, we're in love with each other. We're married. And it was just kind of talking through. Look, we're always for each other. So if I say something to you, and it can be taken two different ways. And mm-hmm. one of them is mean mm-hmm. or negative, And one's good or maybe even neutral. I mean the good one. Because there's a lot of times we'll read into stuff, right? Oh, we know yes. communication can fall apart very Depending rapidly. Depending on that. Oh, absolutely. And, and we have a couple of examples of that. I remember one specifically where I was getting up to go somewhere. And I just mentioned, oh, I'm, and it was something that should have not had any response <laughs> whatsoever. And I don't remember what it was. Like I said, it was a long time I ago. I do. Mm-hmm. You were going to the grocery <laughs> store. Okay. So, I made the comment. There it is. I made the comment. I'm going to the store, which that's innocuous. There shouldn't be any response at all. And all of a sudden, her face changed and dropped. I remember stopping and going, whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you just just hear? hear? Because what I said was that what your face is responding. Right? Right. I heard. You didn't do your job as a wife and make sure our refrigerator is stocked with these basic things. So I'm going to go to the store and do it. But what he said was, you've had a busy life. I know it's been hard this week. I'm going to go grab some of these things so you can take that off your list of things to do. Uh But at the... Are you listening, people? (laughs) Actively listening. (laughs) So we're not forming your opinions yet. We're not done saying what you're saying. And we're, and we're not naming names, but you know who you are. <laughs> Whoever you are. Because the minute uh, and that he said, us. I don't even remember what it was. And she's like, oh, oh I, do. I do. I do. I'll never forget that day. We don't it forget was those the things. day that when he, so he took that leadership role yeah. and acknowledged my you face and yeah. my emotional yeah. Changed. I had an emotional change that wasn't what he was anticipating. Probably wasn't what I was anticipating. Yeah. But what I heard and what I read into his, hey, I'm going to go to the store and get some, you know, bread and milk or whatever, was something very negative. And he took that leadership role and was like, wait, what did you just hear me say? And I felt weak and I felt like I wasn't doing my job like somehow and I had put expectations on myself we've been pretty good about not putting expectations on each other but we do put really high standard on ourselves ourselves. which has been a weakness for expectations in general are just not healthy for Mm. any for yourself or for any relationship well it becomes a situation that you know the enemy and really gets into your head that's right that's right right. and then he he yeah. begins to, you know, puppeteer the emotions with of it how for much women. You suck at what you're doing. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. He's yeah. A, manipulates. Yeah. yeah. So that we, he fixed it that night. We fixed it. We we don't go to bed mad. Right. Those are, you know, all mm-hmm. the. I feel like a lot of the basics. Matt has always taken the lead role of. Are we gonna talk this out? What are we gonna do here? <laughs> like, yeah, we're gonna sit up until three, four o'clock. Yeah. Well, let's be super clear though. That's changed over the years because That's true. early on, and I mean, I mentioned. In, in our prior one, um, I've always been an introvert, 
And so I, I joke about being a recovering introvert, having been married to someone who's very extroverted. So early on, it yeah. would be like she had to go fishing. Like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And in my head, I'm wanting to answer, but I just couldn't. It wouldn't cool. come out. Well, and you would was, have all the conversations. Well, that's a separate thing. Before but yes, you'd that's even true. trust me to. That's true. So he would work out all of the answers the that, that I mind. might come up with. And decide whether or not the conversation was worth having. There and you go. I would say, but I'm worth it. You don't know if I, what if I can think of something or come up with a, a, an answer that you haven't already thought of? Yes. And so yes. We, we recognize that pride in both of yeah. us yeah. was not healthy. And then I would say one of the other ones is realizing, I mean, you know, what we've heard it said a lot of times, guys are kind of wired to fix things, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's times where that's not what's needed. And so I think mm -hmm. a part of what's really grown over the years also is, um, aside from the going to bed mad or anything, if there's something going on, sometimes it's one of those, okay, we're going to go to bed not mad. We're going to make the agreement on when we're going to come back to this. Yeah. Not to leave it out there. That was a mistake I made early. Let's get back to this. And then I'd be like, everything's fine and not come back to it. That's yeah. true. But because um, sometimes it's one of these things. Sometimes it's something that, you know, she and I would need to work out together. Sometimes it's something that the Lord needed to work out with her. And there's times that it was something that the Lord needed to work out with me. And, and so, so when you have those opportunities to separate, you know, there's times that we went to bed like, man, how's this going to get fixed? And nothing mm -hmm. terrible, but, you know, just not sure. Yeah. And, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, a day or two later, it's fine because what was really needing to happen was something needed to be dressed in, like, my heart, my mind, what I was doing, something that had fallen off the radar. You know, I'd let this kind of plate fall off from here. Yes. And, you know, um, and thought, oh, everything's fine because there hasn't been any issue with it. But it's like, okay, I was leaving something out that needed to be done that was And healthy. I'm over there or, twiddling my thumbs wondering, when are we going to actually talk about this? Right. Is it my job and role as a wife to even bring it up? Like, ha like right. there's some weird little, like, lines in there that as a believer, I'm like, Lord, I need him to hear you. I need him to fix the foxes are in the fence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that Song of Solomon, when they talk yeah. about the little foxes oh, the little that come foxes? in, I'm like, yeah, well, guess what? They're re producing by the minute right now. Right, yeah. like, we need to handle this. But yeah. my, my turtle, I learned and maybe took it to a fault of just kind of giving him a wide berth to, okay, he just needs to go figure it out and find mm -hmm. his words rather than me ch -ch -ch at him, which the, you know, foolish woman tears her house down. Yes, and she does. That's how she does it. Mouth. With her mouth. And also I'll go a step further with her thoughts. Because when I think that he's going to do something wrong, guess what he does every time? <laughs> something wrong. Because yeah. I'm actually looking for that thing. Yes. Even if it's subconscious or some pit. Well, that's foolish. It that's is. That's what a foolish wife does. And Instead of being back and praying. And having... Have, thinking the best. The Lord gave me that vision of have a list. Have a list of all the things you love about Matt. So that when I'm angry with something not working out the way I wanted it to work out or whatever, or a conversation not going well. Okay, I love him because he's a godly leader. I love him. Yes. And oftentimes it was going back to part one, what we talked about. He's the one he, you chose him, Lord. That's right. So he's the one who you, said it's yours. You chose yours. him. You chose mm -hmm. him for me. What are you wanting to do in me through this? And when I come back to that, oh, I got a list of things I need to work on. So exactly. then all of a sudden the, the shroud is down and I'm able to go, oh, that's right. We're flawed. We're flawed individuals. We're broken vessels who need reconciliation on a daily, on a daily basis. Daily basis. His to mercy him, is brand new to every, each every other, day. Yes. Every single day. And when we say we've been doing this for a while, the funny thing is, what was it, two weeks ago, we had a conversation on exactly communication. Mm -hmm. And so we're still working on this. And, oh, I, and yeah. it was one of those like little revelation ones, like, look, it's better to um, work through something and yeah. get a bad grade at it as opposed to not doing anything at all because you're worried about not being perfect. And get a right. zero for not showing And it's like, up. oh, yeah, yeah let's yeah. show yeah. up and do what we need to do. And, and right. one of the other ones, I remember we've said, like, oh, I don't know if I should talk about this, babe. I just really, and we're like, look, look, we love each other. Just get it all out and we'll clean it up once it's out there. Because yes. sometimes you don't know what to say. You're like, all this stuff's going on. It's like my heart, it's my mind. I just, I'm trying to get the right words. It's like, look, 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 just, and we'll work it out together and see what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry. unscrabble the scrabble. Yeah. Yes. 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 You've got to so fix good. that scrabble. Because it's a team. 
Well, I mean, in all honesty, that's what it is. That's We're right. trying to go through life. There's as a team. time where he has said to me <clears throat> many times, "I'm for you." Yeah, I love that. I'm on your side. I'm on I'm your side. I'm your ally. Save I'm not your enemy. I love you. We oh, heard a comedian. That's true. Yeah. That was talking about this, and he's yes. all like, there was this time that my wife, we were having an argument and stuff like this, and, but, you know, we're, we're married. We're doing this together, and she's mad, and I'm mad, and we're yeah. both very loud people, and she's like, that's it. I'm packing the bags, and he goes, well, that's fine. Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> and it's all like, hey, we're in this together. That's Thicker the premise thin. of yeah. our marriage right there. Where Thicker are we thin. going? Yeah. That problem's going to go with us, right? Mm -hmm. In the time we have left, guys. Oh, mm -hmm. um, Jesus is so Give good. our audience out there your favorite scriptures of hope and encouragement because a lot of people out there um, are hope. not encouraged for one reason or another. There's no hope in their hope lives, in their one. marriage, and they feel, you know, helpless. Uh, helpless and hopeless. God could never fix that. What could you tell our, oh, man. our audience right now? And when you do look into that camera, whoever wants to go first. Yeah. You have the. Scripture. Go ahead and go first, and then I'll look mine up. No, you look it up, because I... Okay. I would have to get my phone out. <laughs> okay. The best part is, is God has taken His Word and made it alive in your life. That's right. Amen. And that's where you're going to speak, because it's coming from God Almighty Himself. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because the thing is, is His like we talked letter. about, if we build on the Scripture, that doesn't change, Right opinions and thoughts and ideas does kind of come and go and the, the whatever the, the, the flavor of the day is, right, comes and goes. Um, but you come back and stand firm. So in Ecclesiastes, and this is one of the ones that just comes to mind as far as, as being married, it says in, in verse uh, 9 of chapter 4, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fall, one will lift his um, companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls. Uh, for he has no one to help him up. Again, mm. if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm, al warm alone? Uh, yes. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly is broken. broken. That's the, the, the thing that holds it together. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quick, quickly, Faith. Okay, as yeah. quick as possible. Psalm 127. And it says, um, unless the Lord builds the house, they who labor, labor in vain. Right? And so... I know that for us, from the moment we first held hands, God began building a house. Yes. It didn't make it easy. It's, in fact, it's been a struggle to keep God in the center because we've had times when Let's work. We have to fight for we it. We never wanted to leave God. No. But we did have seasons where it's been very hard to get along with each other. Um, but we knew God was building the house, and so we would always circle back around and go, okay, well, we got to ask God and invite him into this minute. And you have to do that sometimes hour for hour, minute for minute, day to day. Right. Amen. Um, otherwise, Amen. there's no reconciliation. Matt, Faith, just Thank in time. Thank you. Thank you for being with Thank us today. You. Oh, Thank you for being awesome. with us today. Thank you for listening. Until next time, Jesus loves God you bless you. God bless nice you. Nice to meet you.